this guy saved over $140,000 in taxes by not getting his green card and it's kind of insane. So my friend recently sent me this post from blind and it's too cool not to share. Alright so let me just jump into this blind post. Why I refuse to get my green card. Both my current and my previous employer reviewed my CV and said I should apply for the EB1 green card since I have thousands of citations from my PhD publications and won several research awards. Furthermore, my wife is a US citizen. However, I still refuse to apply for a green card and instead opted to get the O1 visa instead. Okay, so first off, before we continue into this blind post, I want to acknowledge that this guy's probably insanely cracked at coding. I mean, just based off the first paragraph, 1,000 citations on your PhD is insane and winning several awards, like, let's get this straight, this guy's cracked. And I think for some additional context that might leave some of you confused, in this post, he says that he left the US in one year and then came back a year after on the O1 visa. And some more context, the O1 visa is like an extraordinary talent visa. Just to reiterate, this guy's insane insanely good, insanely smart. Now to continue the post, he says, the reason is if you're not a US citizen or green card holder, you do not have to pay any capital gains tax if you qualify as a non-resident. This works if you spend less than 31 days in the US per tax year. He then says, I had over about $400,000 in unrealized capital gains from investing in the stock market and crypto in the last seven years. And the UK does not tax foreign income slash gains unless you establish domicile not residency in the UK, which takes several years. Okay, so this is actually really interesting. I made a video recently about how I did my taxes on a TN visa when it came from the US. So this tax residency stuff is really fresh in my mind. But when doing the video, I did not realize that tax residency could be used in this sort of way. Now, the specific thing that he's talking about here is the substantial presence test. If we go on the article that he linked, which is the substantial presence test, it basically says you will be considered a United States resident for tax purposes if you meet the substantial presence test for the calendar year. To meet this test, you must be physically present in the US on at least one, 31 days during the current calendar year and two, 183 days during the three-year period that includes the current year and the two years immediately before that counting. All the days you were present in the current year, one third of the days you were present in the year before, and one sixth of the days you were present in the second year before the current year. So based on the substantial presence test, you have to be in the US for over 31 days in the current calendar year and then 183 days over the past three years based on some formula. Now, let's say he was working in the US the whole entire time in the past two years, he never left. He would definitely pass the second clause of the substantial presence test. But because he does not spend 31 days in the current calendar year, he does not pass the substantial presence test and therefore cannot be a resident alien of the US. By not being a resident alien of the US, he therefore becomes a non-resident alien of the US. Now, since he's a non-tax resident of the US, he still has to pay income tax on the income that he earns in the US, right? But there is a very important note about being a resident versus being a non-resident. So if we go over the tax treatment for non-resident aliens, if you are a non-resident alien engaged in trade or business in the US, you must pay US tax on the amount of your effectively collected income after allowable deductions at the same rate that applies to US citizens and residents. Now, everything so far is pretty cool, but I think the big baller move comes in for the capital gains. Apparently, capital gains does not count as income if you're a non-resident alien. So essentially, he was able to sell all of his stocks in the year that he moved and rebuy them all to get an adjusted cost basis and saved all of that money that he would have paid in capital gains tax, which he says is over $140,000. So if we go back to the blind article, I got a temporary one year relocation to the UK office last year and spent only 30 days in the US in 2022 and then returned to the US in 2023. So in 2022 is the year that he's doing this finesse. So I was able to sell everything and buy it back again, thus resetting my cost basis. I saved over $140,000 in taxes this way and had a wonderful time traveling the world for a year, mostly in Europe with my wife who has a full-time remote job. Now, based off my very limited research, you don't get taxed as a non-resident alien on your capital gains, but instead you get taxed on those capital gains in the country where you are a tax resident of, like where you're residing of. But what's interesting is that he went to the UK, which is not taxed as foreign income slash gains, unless you establish domicile, which is different than residency. So essentially he's in the state of limbo with this capital gains tax, where it's basically got nowhere to be captured because he was a non-resident in the US. And then in the UK, they don't tax him on those foreign gains. And he was basically able to sell everything, adjust his cost basis and not pay that capital gains tax, which is insane. Now, continuing on with this post, he says, I got taxed attorneys to do my international taxes who confirmed that everything was completely legal in my 2022 tax filings and were approved by both the IRS and the UK. I might leave the US again for a year and a couple years. The tax lawyers have also confirmed that it would be completely legal for my wife to gift me her appreciated stocks using her lifetime gift limit of $12 million and then sell it the year I become a non-resident again without paying any capital gains tax. So he's basically saying, I might run this thing again in a couple years to basically save my wife from her taxes. Now, I hope this helps others who might be able to take advantage of this legal tax avoidance strategy. Maybe your spouse is a non-resident. Maybe you can try this strategy the first year you or your spouse move to the US. Or if you leave the US and move back to your home country, say if you retired or got laid off. And then in this last sentence, he says, a US citizenship or green card isn't always worth it. Now, the reason he says this is as a US green card holder or a US resident, you have to pay worldwide taxes on all of your income, no matter where you live. Now, fun fact, the USA and Etria, Etria, 
Eritrea. I'm gonna, how do I say this word? Eritrea. Eritrea. So fun fact, the USA and Eritrea, which is a country in East Africa, are the only countries in the whole entire world that tax you based on your citizenship and not based on your residency. So him not getting his green card in combination with his last year residency rule was the key in not paying any of this capital gains tax and basically doing this whole entire finesse tax avoidance strategy. And this is just another, albeit like super niche reason, but still a reason to not get your green card or even your H-1B as a TN visa holder. I've said this before in other videos and I kind of stand by this statement, but unless you specifically want the green card to become a US citizen and stay in the US for a long time or any other specific reason that you would want the H-1B, I think you should just stay in the TN. But I can talk about that more in depth in another video. Now, as cool as this post is, it is coming from blind, right? And if you've been on blind before, you can understand it's a huge cesspool. But even aside from that, I always try to play the devil's advocate when I see something that is in my eyes too good to be true. And I always try to err on the side of skepticism. Doing a little bit more research on this person in particular, looks like he had a business insider article written about him and he has a blog, which I will link in the comments. Apparently you can pay for business insider articles to be written about you. So I wouldn't take that one piece of information and say like, okay, this guy's legit. But in addition to his blog, the things he's linked at his blind post and my very limited knowledge on US taxes, I think that this could be legit. Now, even though this could be true, I would still like to play a little bit of devil's advocate and try to think of some counter arguments toward this being like the most impressive tax move I could ever think of. So the first issue that I could come up with in my head after doing some brainstorming is it banking. Like I know that banking and brokerage accounts are kind of stingy about you know, your residency and, you know, having a permanent address where you can mail stuff to. Apparently in his comments, he set that address to be his parents' place or his wife's parents' place so they could send the mail there, take photos and then send it to them when they're traveling abroad. Now, this sounds like it would work in theory, but in practice, I really don't know, right? Like you would definitely have to talk to an accountant about this and see if this is actually something that you could do. Now, the second devil's advocate point that I can think of is the tax stuff. Like each country has their own rules on taxation, on work and on like bringing capital gains, etc., to that country. And depending on which countries you go to, you have to be very cautious on the rules that they have there. And the last point that I have is that this is truly something that is extraordinary. What I mean by this is that not everyone can do this and the people who can do this are not necessarily going to take advantage of this. So in the first place, in order to do this, you have to be a TN visa or H-1B visa in the US. So that already slims down the percentage of people that can do this to very slim, right? Because that's the only way that you're going to be able to be a non-resident of the US. And from that slim percentage, you have to get a people that are actually willing to do something as crazy as this, right? Like as large as this, like this is a pretty big move. It takes a lot of moving parts, it takes a lot of forethought to do something like this. So within those parameters, I don't think a lot of people would actually be taking advantage of doing something like this. But with that being said, what can you as a viewer do with this information and take away from this video? Well, as a US citizen or a green card holder, basically nothing, but like, you know, you can't do anything because you're a resident, so hold your L. But I think the main takeaway is, is that there are certain strategies that you can implement in order to reduce the amount of taxes you're gonna pay, or in some cases, avoid them. In the last year of US US residency if you're on a TN visa. Even though this isn't part of the regular scheduled programming, my friend sent me this blind post. I had to show it. It was so interesting. So if you do have questions or comments or video ideas, please feel free to leave them down below. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you're on a TN visa watching this and you just moved to the US, you can watch this video right here where I go over five tips that you have to know once you have the TN visa.